Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters and today we are going to be doing a stoichiometry problem that encompasses pretty much all of the concepts that you might come across. You know, if you can do this one, then you're well on the way to understanding stoichiometry. So, um, it's a little bit involved, and so what we have is a sample of sodium chloride. Now, sadly, this has been contaminated with sodium carbonate. Um, and so obviously people are a bit upset about this, and so they want to know how much sodium carbonate is in the sodium chloride. In other words, uh, what is essentially the percentage by mass of sodium chloride in this contaminated mixture. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take this mixture, we're going to dissolve it up, and we're going to react the mixture with HCl, hydrochloric acid. Now, what's that going to do? Well, to the sodium chloride, absolutely nothing. To the sodium carbonate, it's going to have a chemical reaction. And hopefully, you should know that carbonate plus acid gives you CO2 plus water. So we've got a chemical reaction going on there. So adding the HCl will just react with the sodium carbonate and it won't touch the sodium chloride. Now, unfortunately, we don't know how much HCl we have to add to react with the sodium carbonate. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an excess of HCl. We're going to keep chucking in HCl until everything stops bubbling. And that then means that all of the sodium carbonate's gone, but then that means that we've also got some excess HCl there. How is that any use to us? Well, what we can then do is that we can titrate the excess HCl with sodium hydroxide. And when we do that, we know how much HCl must have actually reacted with the sodium carbonate. This is a thing called a back titration, and that may be something that, that you have come across in your studies thus far, okay? So, that's essentially the guts of it. We're taking this mixture, we're reacting it with excess HCl, we're then reacting that excess HCl with sodium hydroxide, and from that, Using our stoichiometric principles, we can figure out how much of this and how much of this must have been in the mixture, okay. So, <clears throat> let's have some numbers then. So, we take 1.351 grams of the mixture. HCl, we took 50.00 mils, and its concentration was 0 0.225 mole per litre. And then, once we have done that reaction, we then took our sodium hydroxide. Our sodium hydroxide had a concentration of 0 0.100 mole per litre. And uh, the volume that that required was 20.74 mil. And that's all the data that we now need. And the question that we're answering, what's the mass percentage of sodium chloride in this particular mixture? How much impurity have we got? Right, so we look at <clears throat> this vast amount of data that we have here. What are we given? We're given a concentration, we're given a volume, we're given a concentration, we're given a volume. And we're also given a mass of the mixture. So where do we start? We're going to start sort of at the end, which seems a little bit strange, but the last thing that we do in this whole uh, experiment is the sodium hydroxide titration. And so we're going to utilize uh, the data that we've got for sodium hydroxide and then we're going to sort of work backwards and that will allow us to figure out how much sodium chloride is in our mixture. So here is a concentration, here is a volume. What can we get if we have a concentration and a volume? Remember C N over V. So therefore we can get a number of moles of NaOH and that is going to equal to 0 0.100 mole per litre multiplied by, remember this is mils, we need it in litres, 0.02074 litres, 
and that is going to give us 2.07 times 10 to the minus 3 mole of sodium hydroxide. Now what does that correspond to? Now we, we, we really need to think through this logically, what we're actually doing here. So we have a number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Now that sodium hydroxide has reacted with HCl, but it's only reacted with the excess HCl that was left behind after this had reacted with the sodium carbonate. That's the important point that you need to appreciate here, okay? Let's then um, say that the number of moles of sodium hydroxide is going to be the same as the number of moles of excess HCl. How do we know that? Well, we know that because we've got a balanced chemical equation, haven't we? HCl plus NaOH goes to NaCl plus H2O. It's a one-to-one -one reaction. So the number of moles of NaOH that we have got is going to be equal to the number of moles of HCl that is in excess. So let's write that down. So the number of moles of HCl in excess is equal to 2.07 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. Right, <clears throat> so where does that get us? Well, remember what we were also given was the concentration and the volume of the initial HCl solution. Given a concentration and a volume, we can get a number of moles. So let's say the number of moles of HCl, let's call it initial, is equal to the uh, concentration, which was 0 0.225 mole per liter, and the volume, which was 50 mils, again, put it into liters, 0 0.0500 liters, and so that then gives us 0 0.0113 moles of HCl we had initially. Okay, so remember we had that solution of HCl, we chucked it in our mixture to react with the sodium carbonate. All of it reacted with the sodium carbonate and some got left over. So, this is what we had initially. This is what was left over. So therefore, the difference between the two will be the number of moles of HCl that actually reacted with the sodium carbonate. That's important. So the number of moles of HCl that reacted with the sodium carbonate is going to be what we had initially, 0.0113, minus what we had at the end. The stuff left over, 2.07 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. And then when we do that, we get 9.23 times 10 to the minus 3 mole. Right, so that number, <laughs> if you're keeping track, is the number of moles of HCl that actually reacted with the sodium carbonate. That's what we need to know, because we need to know how much sodium carbonate was in that mixture to begin with. So where does this get us? Um, well, it, it actually gets us a long way along the track because this will tell us the number of moles of sodium carbonate that we had in the mixture and we're nine tenths of the way there once we do that. First, before we do anything, we need to write the balanced chemical equation for the reaction between HCl and sodium carbonate. HCl plus sodium carbonate, Na2CO3. And what does that give us? Well, Again, acid plus carbonate always gives you CO2 plus H2O. What have we got left over? We've probably got some sodium chloride left over. NaCl. Um, let's balance this up. One carbon, one carbon. Uh, oxygen, oxygen. How many sodium chlorides do we need? Well, we've got two sodiums here. Chances are we're going to need two sodium chlorides there, which means that we're going to, chances are, need two HCLs there. And is this looking balanced? We've got two hydrogens, two hydrogens, 
two chlorides, two chlorides, two sodiums, two sodiums, we've got a carbon, and three oxygens, two and one makes three. There's a balanced chemical equation for you. The important take home message, it's a two to one mole ratio reaction. Okay, so in other words, here is our number of moles of HCl. We can then get the number of moles of sodium carbonate once we know this. So let's do what we always do. Let's say, right, the number of moles of HCl over two should equal the number of moles of sodium carbonate, CO3, over one. And again, remember, anything divided by one is just itself. So let's take that out so we don't get confused. So we want the number of moles of sodium carbonate. Here it is. We get it by dividing this number here by two, which is equal to 9.23 times 10 to the minus three mole divided by two. That then equals 4.62 times 10 to the minus three mole. Oh, we're getting close now. Uh, we really are, because now we've got the number of moles of sodium carbonate that was in that mixture. If we have a number of moles and we know a chemical formula, we can get a mass, because we can get the molar mass, can't we? So therefore, we go back to our good old M is equal to M divided by N equation. So therefore, the mass is equal to the number of moles times the molar mass which is equal to 4.62 times 10 to the minus 3 mole multiplied by the molar mass of sodium carbonate, which is going to be 2 times 22.99 plus 12.01 plus 3 times 16 grams per mole. And if you multiply that out, then what that gives you is that the mass of sodium carbonate is equal to 0 0.490 grams. Okay, that's what we get from all of this and we are now literally nine tenths of the way there because we have our mass of sodium carbonate that must have been in the mixture. We know what the mass of the mixture was. Remember, we were told that the mass of the mixture was 1.351 grams. Now, we've gone, a, we've gone and shown that in that mixture, we had 0 0.490 grams of sodium carbonate. So how much sodium chloride do we have there? It's going to be what we had, the total mass, and subtract the uh, mass of sodium carbonate, 0.49 grams and that then gives you 0 0.861 grams okay 0 0.861 grams of sodium chloride was in the mixture and the question asked for the mass percent of sodium chloride and so therefore the mass percent is simply going to be this number over what we had originally multiplied by 100, so that's going to be 0.861 grams over 1.351 grams multiplied by 100, and that gives you 63.7%. So as I was saying right at the start, this encompasses a whole lot of really important facets of stoichiometry and solving these sorts of problems. Again, if you didn't follow it all the way through, go back to the start and work through it slowly. What are we using here? We're using balanced chemical equations, and we're using those two stoichiometry equations, and really that's about it. It's just a matter of utilizing them, of knowing how to do that, and that is pretty much true of most stoichiometry problems. You know generally which equation you have to use, it's just a matter of how you use those equations, certainly in combination with a balanced chemical reaction. So hopefully you found that illuminating and uh, we'll see you next time.